Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. It's like now play is not fun and reading is not fun because you only have to get to read fucking shitty books. Art, not fun. You're not allowed to, if you're drawing and you draw raindrops on everything, you're literally, your kindergarten teacher will tell you I that your drawing reminds them of a two-year-old. <laughs> I was four or five or however old you are in fucking kindergarten and i got i got made fun of by being the most creative kid in the class because i looked around and everyone drawn the scene with this happy sunshine guess what a young mike weeby thinking outside the box made the sky black <laughs> and raindrops keep falling on on people's heads maybe right. a sign of my depression of what was going on at home <laughs> No, my teacher says, you look like, this looks like a two-year-old drew it. Well, guess what, Miss Young? You're probably old. You were old then, so you're probably Miss Dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> you told her. We might have just lost a listener. I'm Wait sure. a second. Wait a second. Can you draw one of those for us right now? So we can no, judge I don't, it? No, I don't fuck it. I lost my love of art that day. <laughs> right. <laughs> I imagine her walking up behind you and just snatching your construction paper and wadding it up in a ball right in front of your face and says, this, this is for serious artists, not for two year old <laughs> baby artists. Just toss it, toss it in the can. Did you have structured recess? Probably. I don't remember. I mean, I just remember a very like, I remember brutalist architecture. And I remember walking in a lot of lines. Was this a Romanian orphanage? Was this? Oh, I wish the architecture was that good. It this was <laughs> everything was stone blocks. I was cold always, except for when it was hot. It was awful. Everything, everything was school no good. Do you have a name or a number? Well, I remember screaming, "I am not a number." A free man. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember a bunch of teachers came in, and they all had riot gear. And big shields with with like visors that with that were tinted, so I couldn't see their faces. They had batons that stunned you. They were some sort of magnetic electric thing, and electric, then, <laughs> electric <laughs> stun batons, and they they stunned me. They put me into a. It was a room. And they put a visor. They put a visor over my head. It was like a, but it was like a. It was like a perfect cube that went over my head and it was completely dark. I mean, just imagine the most pain you've ever felt. And it was that. And, they, and I thought I thought I was on fire and then they took it off my head. Turns out I was just normal with some sort of neural sensor. <laughs> Did you have to put your hand in a box? Oh, I had to put my head in a box, which is worse than a hand. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. you're going to put something in a box. The, the head's the thing that controls your hands. And I had to put that in a box. It's, that checks out. Mm -hmm. Your head controls your hands. So for real, the fact that I use my real, <laughs> real kindergarten teacher's name, does that, does that affect my admission to a good or bad afterlife? It may hold up your kindergarten transcripts if you ever apply to college again. You never wished for her death. You merely acknowledged that given the passage of time and her age when she was your teacher, she likely is deceased. I was pretty shitty, right? I'm not, I am not, I'm, I'm making none of that up, but I'm especially making, not making that one thing up. Like I viscerally remember that. And, and, and with every year kind of growing further and further of going like, did you just, how old are you when you're in kindergarten, Brian? Like five or six, maybe. Yeah. I kind of remember even by seven going, did you just compare a five-year-old to a two-year-old? It's, it's a weird, it's a weird flex. It is. I wish I would have had that knowledge and that slang to look at her and go, weird flex, yo. 
<laughs> it would, she would have not have understood what you were saying. Probably not. She would have just said that you had grammar like a three-year-old. <laughs> Slaps you <laughs> the back of her hand. I'll say too, though, like in and this isn't defending her, Miss Young. Yeah, and is now likely dead. <laughs> just to recap, no, now likely, and uh, now maybe she married someone named Dead. So her name is oh, Mrs. Hey, dead. Mrs. Dead. Man, I wish I had that fucking that painting now and i bet i could get some cash well along with this story i bet i could get some i'll mm-hmm. turn into an nft buy hey. her fucking house <laughs> evict her i'm gonna i don't know fucking put it on her permanent record how about that <laughs> just go carve it into her tombstone i guess <laughs> yeah it'll say miss young beloved mother beloved wife and then dumb fuck when it comes to art. <laughs> I'll just I'll just go chisel that in under just under whatever. Yeah. You've, you've got a chisel kit, so you can probably get that done. I, I've chiseled a lot of shit in 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 tombstones. It's not my first time, and won't be my last. I'm sure. Just go changing people's death dates. Everybody dies in eighty eight, eighty eight. I because I pre made a lot of people's, and I put January first, two thousand, on all of them, and I learned quite a lesson about anticipating a doomsday <laughs> uh, the pre-made still, tombstone business that's got a nice yeah, ring to it i invested a lot of money uh that i'm still getting out of the hole that being said i got a bunker full of beans You've got a bunker full of beans uh, is there any chance she overestimated your humor and that she thought that you were going to be in on the joke like that was like a real clever line. <laughs> yeah, she was roasting. She she thought that she to like roast comedy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mike's pretty sharp. He'll get this. <laughs> this yeah. will scar him for life. He won't yeah. bring this up decades from now. What if you just have this, you know, you have you you just go on this quest to, you know, teach her a lesson and put her in her, in her place and then when you you get there, she's like, "Oh, I believe I have that." That drawing you made, and she shows it to you, and you're like, yeah, it does look like a two-year-old made this. Or she just shows it to him and says it still looks like shit, doesn't it? (laughs) Or she has it, and she's been keeping it all along because she's filled with grief, filled with regret, and she grew to understand it. Right. Maybe she just, maybe she, maybe you overestimated her capacity for hate connecting. Yeah. (laughs) Connecting with, with your art. She was going through it, probably going through a hard, hard divorce, a bad Mm -hmm. divorce. Oh, yeah. And that drawing, that crayon on a on a pre-drawn, uncolored photo was something that she connected to in such a visceral way that she couldn't even she could handle it. Her only her only Mm -hmm. the only way she knew to deal with that kind of truth was to lash out at a five-year-old right. at the closest five-year-old it just happened to be you yeah and that's and and it probably took her it probably took her you know 40 years a couple more divorces mm-hmm. battle with booze and pills a car wreck a dead pedestrian a secret <laughs> that caused more lies uh, that caused more pain that caused more dare i say death and now oh. As she in her age, she finally realizes that it's always been that picture that she's been running to, running from, but it's always been there since that moment. And she's ready to 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 explain that to me. And I will I will I will take it. And you think that I would spit in her face. This is not what I thought. You know, you're thinking that I would, but I won't. I will okay. take that picture and I will say to her. I know it took you a while to get you to understand this. And if you think that this is moving, where do you see my new shit? <laughs> so with, with that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with... I am Brian Camp. I'm Mike Weeby, firebrands, provocateur, mm. visionary, catcher, and releaser of dreams. And uh, the person that is uh, the the math minded, I'm 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 all 
art and colors and sky, but this person is just hard, hard numbers. Mm -hmm. Just numbers fall. Hit, hit. Like I, I make colors fall from the sky. He makes numbers fall from the sky. He makes math into something that is a language. He barely speaks because it's all numbers. <laughs> it's all, it's not just zeros. It's not just ones. It's all the numbers going through his head, quantifying, quantitizing, Man, by the ones and twos, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Ryan. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Hey. Yeah. That was upbeat, Mark. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Somebody's <laughs> excited right. to be here. Yeah, fake it till you make it, right, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm out. All right, you son of a bitch. I think we should put this podcast on vinyl. I think this is yeah. the one. That's a really good idea. <laughs> I think we should do every... Uh, honestly, I think we should do every podcast on vinyl. So are we, we're not going to upload them anymore? People who want to listen can just yeah, mail us a check people, for... No, like this is not for... Right, we don't want just anybody to listen to this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like any kind of technology, to be honest with you. But the one that I will listen to is vinyl. Yep. Even live music is too digital for me. Like when someone's singing, I'm, there's a little part of me that's like, I wish this was more pure. And it pisses me off. It's as and it I, would. It's... I end up getting too drunk uh, at any every concert because I'm so mad about the way that things are now. Right. That's a good way to handle anger. I think everything everything I hear from now on, Mike, I'm always going to in my head trace back to that bitch, Miss Young. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, 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 are are you surprised that I have conflicting feelings about art because of her? Oh no, you. You're famous for your hardline stances on art. <laughs> it's one of the things I'm most famous for. Mm -hmm. So are we going to okay, talk yeah. about the news? Are we going to... You know, for our first story, what do you think was the real difference between Mickey Rooney and Andy Rooney? Oh, that's... Now that's <laughs> something we can sink our teeth into. Yeah. Well, one of them was in Boys Town. Mm -hmm. they, like, that, was, that was Mickey Rooney. Were they both in Boys Town? Did, was it Andy no. Rooney who played the priest? No, Andy Rooney was not an actor. No, he was. He was on TV. He was an actor. No, I know he's a that. journalist who complained nah, a lot. Was, no, no. He was on that show, that show <laughs> about the bomb called 60 Minutes and would open up with a shot of the bomb going. Yeah. It was the They have to defuse the bomb every single week. Cut the green wire. That was the last thing. Every episode closed with Andy Rooney screaming, cut the green wire. The doomsday clock is a real thing, right? It just it's, got it's, it's British yeah, they, DEFCON, right? They they well it, they they adjust it every year, but yeah, it's you know yeah. it was a a perfect explanation of what it was. But it's literally a giant clock that they wheel out, right? <laughs> and they go like, Let, "We are this close, closer," and it's it's literally like one minute to midnight. I feel like those scientists when they were going to school, they they majored science in school. science science well. They majored in science, but when you wheel out a giant clock and show how close it is, you also minored in drama. <laughs> right, right. Oh. So the doomsday clock is currently set at 100 seconds to midnight. They, they go by the second? I thought it was minutes. Well, you know, when you get when you get close enough, you, you know, you want to know within seconds, probably. Do you guys ever think that it's two minutes to midnight? The hands that threaten <laughs> doom. Two minutes to midnight. Man, there's no doing that guy's voice. There's no even like he's great. He's still great too. Yeah, man. I'd go see Iron Maiden. I would too. I would jump at the chance to see Iron Maiden. Is it because you like the band, or is it because you're just a big fan of Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner? Both. Well, I, I mean, I am a fan of that song and all mm -hmm. of the English classes. It got me through. <laughs> That one project in every English class that it, you could like weasel your way into not really doing anything and just going up there and playing. You're the rhyme of the ancient mariner, the <laughs> man on the bomb of the seas, and the man of the bomb with the wedding dress got a bum bum, but a mum set me free. <laughs> and you can sit there in front of the class with the jam box, and the yeah. one metal kid is stoked, and everyone else is poured out of their fucking mind. yeah <laughs> the one time a year that that kid makes a point to find you after class hey man that was really cool that was cool that was I like man uh, you ever listen to crocus <laughs> crocus <laughs> crocus is with a k right uh-huh all right i i 
I some I sometimes I thought they were called crocus, but uh <laughs> then I heard uh I heard someone say crocus. So now I call them crocus. He wears a Voivod shirt every Friday. <laughs> yeah. So our first story comes to us from the takeout. As you guys know, what is that again? The takeout. It's okay. A food blog. Yeah, food the blog. Food blog. Covers food, restaurants. Okay, so re- and the business of food then. Yes. Okay. So thanks, thanks, Kevin. As you know, the global pandemic has been hard on restaurants and bars. In the UK, pubs without outdoor seating recently opened after five months. All told, it's estimated the UK food and beverage beverage industry lost over thirty six billion dollars during the pandemic. Fortunately. A firm called Company Debt has a solution to get the food and beverage industry back on its feet. There are 52 million adults in the UK. If each of them drank just 124 pints at pubs in 2021, the industry will recover all of its pandemic losses. I can do that. I'll do that right now. <laughs> Does that number include the pints they would have they would have had anyway? It it wasn't totally clear, but I think it's I think it's just what you got to drink from now until the end of the year. And even if you don't like beer, the firm has a number of backup plans. <laughs> I don't need a backup plan because I love beer. <laughs> you could also drink 122 glasses of wine, eat 40 roast dinners, or eat 976 packets of potato chips, or as they call them in the UK. Potato crisps. I can do all that. I can at 100% do all that. I mean, together. So I don't even, why don't they just fly me over there and have me do that to save them money? Put me up, fly me over there, get me a spot. I'll, I'll start drinking. I'll start eating the roasts and the, I, I'm not so excited about the wine. I'll be honest with you. Uh, that is going to give probably be a headache, but, um, some cold, some cold, cold beers. Do they drink? Do they drink them cold there? Or are they like room temperature? Either way, I don't care. I can do it either way. I drank a keg one time, <laughs> <laughs> all by myself at a party. My tolerance is just that high, because I because I can fucking drink. Okay, I can pound yeah. them. I don't see what the big deal of the story is. Why? And I don't understand why they're not doing that in England. I thought they were famous for having their pints. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin. But yes. One, Mike, I'm very impressed with your your ability to drink. <laughs> you don't have to be. It's just something I've been able to do. I, right. I pretty much always could. I feel fortunate that I I just happened to catch you. What sounds like the first time you've ever bragged about the amount that you can <laughs> I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm it's sorry. Just you're fact. right. Just a fact. That's it's right. just a it's fact. Just a fact. <laughs> you, can, you can really drink. Um, I watched yeah. that Andre the Giant documentary. They were talking about how much he could drink, and I was like, "So?" <laughs> I mean, seriously, I was watching. I was just like, "Who cares?" Like, what? I mean, that doesn't take anything away from him. He's a, a fantastic wrestler, wonder person, wonderful like personality, like mm-hmm. entertaining personality, bigger than life. But as far as how much he can drink, who fucking cares? I mean, like, I mean, okay, cool. Hang out with me one weekend. What's the big deal? Is there anyone who can hang out with you, Mike, and and drink as much as you? Do you think? Or uh, have you ever seen? Uh, sometimes Russians will like train a bear to drink, <laughs> and the bear will just keep drinking, like a big Kodiak grizzly bear type thing. That maybe probably Andre the Giant could have hung in his in his in his prime. I I don't even think I'm the best. I just know that that's how much I can drink. It's not a con. Honestly, it's not a contest, and I'm like, I'm not. I'm seriously, I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to make a big deal. I did, honestly, I didn't even know it was that much. I didn't even know it was that much until I ended up at this bar, and a bunch of these Navy yeah. SEALs came yeah. in, and they were all like, "Ah, oh, fuck, we just fucking shot up a place." And I'm like, "Cool, whatever." I mean, awesome, I guess. Thank you for <laughs> killing for me. And I, so I'm like, hey. First rounds on me because actually they were pretty cool. I was like, thank you for all that you do. This Bud's for you. And I started ordering Bud's and Bud Lights for everyone. And I don't know, cut to six hours later, all of them are, you know, half asleep or falling down or whatever. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, can I get another round? I'm ready to watch the. We were halfway through the second Lord of the Rings movie and it was the extended <laughs> cut. <laughs> so just to recap it, and you're at a bar where they they're playing 
Lord of the Rings trilogy. No, I invited him back to my house. Oh, this oh, was okay. at your house. Yeah. And you were ordering, but, and so when you say you were ordering rounds, you were just being figuratively. Then. No, I was, I was, no, I was ordering rounds for them at the bar. Huh. And okay. then I was just like, and I was like, you know what? These dudes are all right. I was like, what do Navy SEALs like more than anything? Epic fantasy movies. Epic fantasy, sure. They're they're all Hobbit heads. So I I invited him over and uh, <laughs> we picked up some kegs. This was not that other keg incident. We picked up some kegs and some cases of Natty Light and Lone Star and um, I don't know. I just started pounding. The next thing I like I said, we're not even to the Battle of Helm's Deep, and all of a sudden I look <laughs> over and. T Bone is like fucking asleep. T Bone, <laughs> uh, yeah. And ha- Hawk, Hawk is like, <laughs> Hawk these, is like, you know. And uh, GI Joe characters that you are. <laughs> the, the nicknames are. Well, no, and then and then Laser pulls off his green beret. <laughs> he, he's wearing a, a green beret. Vomits in his own beret. <laughs> and granted, granted, we are all having a good time. Like it was, it was not fun. I wasn't, and there was no like, oh, I'm making funny. Believe me, you know, whatever. Like these dudes are probably dehydrated from you know from fighting Cobra. If they were in Myanmar, uh, probably <laughs> mm-hmm. overthrowing something or other. Maybe trying to save the good people of Burma. Sure, and the snakes there too. <laughs> so those fucking snakes. They're all over the Everglades. Mm. So I've got a poster that the company made this uh, <laughs> firm made to hang up in bars. I'll show it to you here. Oh yeah, it is like Rosie the Riveter. I think Uncle Sam might have a infringement action. I don't know if I like <laughs> Yeah. Is it, nobody but owns Uncle Sam. We do. <laughs> yeah, we I our tax dollars pay for it. <laughs> Uh, I do like the guy's mustache, though. Yeah, that's a winning mustache. If you had a mustache back then, because of the price difference, <laughs> it only cost a nickel to ride it. <laughs> yeah, like now, now to ride, to, like if I had a mustache like that and I was going to charge right. a ride on it, I would probably, you know, it'd be probably more. It'd be, it'd be more. I don't know how much. Uh, probably with inflation, it. it'd probably be. I don't know, like. 60 bucks maybe wow, that's steep you need a shirt that's that just says mustache rides free with the free crossed out and then a dollar and then thanks biden written yeah, yeah. That just really <laughs> that, would, that would really capture your whole your whole being when, when has our government ever tried to get us to consume is this a government thing or is this just a general? This is just like an accounting firm or a financial oh, okay. firm. Yeah, it's a advertising gimmick. Yeah. Thanks, Takeout, for your hard-hitting journalism. Speaking of which, our next story comes from Insider.com. So this is like a, a spy publication? It's a fanzine about the movie The Insider starring Russell, <laughs> Russell Crowe. <laughs> About uh, the 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 tobacco industry and the whistleblowers involved. Oh yeah. Well, well, that is a real movie. This was this this is like a spinoff, a general news site from Business Insider. Did they cover that movie? Did, they had to give it a good review. I bet. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure they gave it. You know, stellar. So according according to Insider dot com, Zack Snyder, director of the films Three Hundred, the infamous Snyder Cut, and the new Netflix film. Army of the Dead recently sat down with interviewers about his next projects. Snyder said that he wants his next movie to be either a religious movie or a pornographic movie or that he may want to combine the two into one film. Specifically, Snyder said that, quote, from a philosophical standpoint, unquote, his film 300 is already on some level a pornographic movie. Snyder's oh, three- how far up his own ass is this guy? Yeah, Have you ever I seen mean, any of his movies? It's all he's all the way up there. What a what a douchey douchey thing to say about anything you've done yourself. A piece of Was shit. Was he being this guy serious? Is. is he? He wasn't like goofing around. Oh no, he's not goofing around. He's he was being serious. He's so fucking stupid at art. He should go hang out with Miss Young. <laughs> <laughs> what? How do you think she'd feel about his movies? She'd probably love them because they're fucking <laughs> crappy garbage and they they are silly nonsense 
the palatable, palatable shit that's really fucking acceptable for everyone. Easy to understand. Ooh, here's some baby food, sheeple. <laughs> So Snyder's 300 is a fictionalized retelling of the Battle of Thermopylae and is based on a comic book by Frank Miller. It features 300 nearly naked, ripped Spartans who fend off a massive army of Persians. Snyder added that nudity isn't new to his movies. Army of the Dead had one nude moment that Snyder had to cut, saying it was too much. It featured a male stripper zombie who had a bite taken out of his penis. While the naked moment didn't make it into the movie, maybe the success of Army of the Dead means Netflix will one day let Snyder make his religious pornographic movie that's inspired by 300. I'm sure the dude that wrote the script for the all Wolverine Marvel's movie <laughs> is chomping at the bit for... Yeah, naked Wolverine would be one of the Wolverines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> he's tiresome and his fans are exhausting. Um, but I will say I like that very first Dawn of the Dead movie. I'll give him that. Oh, and I do like pornography. I, I love it because, you know, I consider it art just like him. <laughs> I'm glad you're finding common ground with noted awful movie maker Zack Snyder. <laughs> Well, I don't. Does he say what his porno religious movie would be? No, he doesn't really make it clear. He just makes it clear that he believes 300 was a porno movie and that he wants to make a religious and or porn and or both movie next. You know, when you qualify things with phrases like on some level, just you yeah. can say whatever fuck shit thing you want to say after yeah. that. Hey, this guy, he's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we lost Zack Snyder as a listener. That's right. You hear me, Zack Snyder? You're a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're uninvited to the INS Christmas party. What, did Oof. some kind of two-year-old make this movie? Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to be a joke, Zack? Yeah. All right, I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> Zack Snyder. No, it's Snyder. Oh, okay. not. Schneider was on too close. It's Schneider. No, it's Schneider. I think it's Schneider. What was Schneider one on? Day, one day at a time, man. Come on. Yeah. Well, this is it. I found them all. Come on and have a ball. This is it. This is it. <laughs> this is life. It's what you got. It's coming. It's coming. Hang on. <laughs> it's so weird that you remembered that song of all. Like, I remember that's man. I remembered a woman telling me my bar was bad in <laughs> kindergarten. I remember all the not important things to remember. I remember exclusively things to not remember. And I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what my license plate number is in my car. <laughs> it's, it's like finding out that you're, that all the, all the fresh water that comes in your house, house skips the house and goes straight to the septic tank. Yeah. You just have just something in your brain just there's just a, a, a piping problem. Yeah. And it's all getting stuck. It's just there. Maybe I've just formed all the memories I can form by now. Maybe. <laughs> so like <laughs> seven? <laughs> Is that yeah. when you were seeing one day at a time in reruns? Cause I, I didn't Van Halen marry old Yes. For a while. Old, uh, uh, okay. uh Valerie Bertinelli. Uh ain't talking about love. I'm not talking about love. <laughs> I, I feel like that, that's my big issue with Van Halen is their grammar. Yeah, it was often not not good. Hot for teacher should have been hot for the teacher. <laughs> yeah, I am hot for the teacher. I'm hot for the teacher. <laughs> I've got it made, so made. I'm hot for the teacher. <laughs> uh, what 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 are some of their other hits? Uh, that... Running, running with the devil. Yeah, I'm running. Yeah, running with good. the devil. Running with the devil. I have seen you standing there against the record machine. I think you know what I mean. I think you know what I mean. <laughs> might as well jump. I might as well. I might as well jump. I might as well jump. Jump. <laughs> I might as well jump. <laughs> Panama. <laughs> Panama. <-aw. laughs> Panama. 
enema ah 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 it is we might have found the one thing that only the four of us think is funny (laughs) 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 there may be literally no one else who (laughs) their dramatic reading of (laughs) not really the lyrics it's it's like the novelization of the song it's something different than the lyrics yeah it's a spoken word sort of it's the poetry of of Mr. Mm-hmm. Lyra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he dead? They were yeah. dead. He will never die. Before we get to our next story, I've got a message for you guys. Take a listen. Hey everybody, just wanted to tell you the Riverboat Gamblers have a brand new 7-inch out. We covered a Ramon song and we covered a Motorhead song and we were lucky enough to get CJ Ramon to do some backup vocals. It's on limited edition vinyl. There's some yellow and some pink. Uh, You can get it at Gamblers Forever, forevergamblers.com or go to our Bandcamp page. We did a real small run on our own, so get them while they're getting good. Our next story comes to us from Science Magazine. Mm. That's the magazine you read if you major in science at Science College. Mm. Uh, Water bears, also known as tardigrades, are a type of eight-legged, segmented microanimal. They are also one of the most resilient life forms ever discovered. Water bears can survive temperatures close to absolute zero and heat beyond the boiling point of water. They can survive the vacuum of space and even doses of radiation that would be lethal to humans. Now, Kevin, are these just polar bears that we're talking about? Yeah, but with a different name. Polar bears. Uh, No, no. Here, I'll I'll show you a a picture. How's that? Here's a water bear. Well, this is just some Doctor Pooh bullshit. (laughs) This is not. (laughs) This is not real. That's just somebody got a shower curtain and Uh made a costume. That's just a Halloween (laughs) costume, Kevin. Exactly, a cheap one at that. I mean, you know. I I was a joker three years in a row, and I think I put more effort into my costume. <laughs> Were you a different joker every time? Yes. Cesar Romero, Jack Nicholas. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Mean- <laughs> uh, and and the other joker, uh, Heath Ledger, and also the Jared. I'm going to do the Jared Leto version this year because I didn't get to do it last year because of <laughs> fucking fucking pandemic man that really looks like its mouth really does look like uh like a plastic piece to its mouth comes out like a little tube to eat things like a little tube in the center like kind of they're microscopic right yeah well look this is the problem i have you're telling me this is microscopic but i'm looking at a picture of it right now yeah that's weird with with my eyes so that's weird which is it kevin i mean are there any in my hair right now I don't know exactly where they typically live. I just know that they're incredibly hardy and can live and can survive almost anywhere. How many different varietals of tardigrades are there? Yeah, are there polar water bears? Are there water polo bears? Well, they can survive in <laughs> temperatures to uh, at almost absolute zero. So, you know, pr- presumably they can survive uh, in polar regions. They're often found on lichens and mosses, for example, by soaking a piece of moss in water. Uh, Other environments they can be found in include dunes and coasts, generally soil, leaf litter, marine, or freshwater sediments, where they may occur quite frequently, up to 25,000 animals per liter. One tardigrade may be found on barnacles. So it looks like they're everywhere. So in Mike's hair. Yeah. Yeah. Swimming around. I don't want them there. Do they have any now? Is it do you grind them up to make tartar sauce? <laughs> no, I was, you grind up tartars to make up tartar sauce. I was just like tartar freaked people. out that I was just like, I don't what am I going to eat my long john silvers with <laughs> malt vinegar? So, scientists have now devised an experiment to determine water bears' ability to survive impacts in space by. Shooting them using bullets. Like they put them up against a wall and give them a cigarette and shoot them? <laughs> well, they don't need to blindfold them because they don't have eyes. Yeah. We'll get to that in a second. Researchers were inspired to conduct this experiment after a spacecraft carrying water bears crashed onto the moon in 2019. So they wondered if the water bears might still be alive and inhabiting the moon. 
Researchers fed water bears, put them into hibernation by freezing them, then placed them in a hollow nylon bullet and fired them at increasing speeds. How big was a nylon bullet? I mean, you know, normal nylon bullet sized. Ooh, if if, if Mike was going to assassinate somebody, he could use nylon bullets to get through a metal detector. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Nylon bullet full of water I don't know bears. Why I was elected to assassinate someone, but I'll take it. <laughs> well, I, think I guess I'm the most likely source of someone who has some covert ops skills, right. or someone who is just gonna someone who's hanging out with says some people snap. in the secret forces and drank them the fuck under the table. Right. <laughs> Lasers yeah. still shamed. <laughs> Did somebody show up at your house the next day in a hovercraft to pick them up? (laughs) (laughs) So they found that water bears survive at speeds up to 900 meters per second. Now, by contrast, the speed of sound is about... How fast is that, Kevin? Is that the speed of light? Well, no, but the speed of sound is about 343 meters per second. So it's almost three times that. The speed of light is... So so they were going three times the speed of light? Three times the speed of sound. Which is the speed of light. Yeah, that's what you just said. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying there. They're going the speed of light? Jeez. Do they go back in time? Maybe that's why there's so many of them. <laughs> yeah. In addition to that, they also found that uh, water bears survive shock pressures up to 1.14 gigapascals. So, oh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Gigapascal. That 1.4, so that translates to... 4.6 Pedro Pascals. <laughs> yes, exactly. While the lander is thought to have crashed at a few hundred meters per second, the shock pressure generated when it hit the surface would have been well above 1.14 gigapascals, and it confirmed that these water bears do not, unfortunately, inhabit the moon. Yeah, I don't think that that confirms anything of it doesn't, the that's... kind. I, I'm, fl- I'm so fucking jealous of scientists that get paid to do this shit and maybe they film themselves out shooting they went to the fucking shooting range and go like we shot him in the face (laughs) (laughs) spent like 20 grand at a fucking thing well we gotta try a glock 490 Mm -hmm. to see how it kills the fucking space microscope bears (laughs) well now we gotta try a pellet gun Uh, 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 uh. what do you think a bazooka would do to one and they just went out to it. They just shot shit up and got fucking lit. <laughs> <laughs> and went back and just wrote like, oh, man, it didn't even fucking it didn't a, a bazooka like got them. It, it, they it rattled them. But everything else, it didn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, really? Do you have any proof? Like, uh, yeah, you can find out about it with science. And numbers, and they showed him a big fucking sheet of theorems, and like, well, can we see a picture of them? Like, nope, they're too tiny. I don't like the tardigrade skin. Can I say that yeah, too? Yeah, it looks like a like a like a fetal pig soaked in uh, formaldehyde. Oh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger's face when he's wearing that lady disguise in Total Recall. <laughs> Get ready for a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That was such a weird. <laughs> like it doesn't make like <laughs> what a, <laughs> the technology to do that to have it like split off in segments and come back together and then it's also a bomb and it goes <laughs> get ready for a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but but it can't program. He can't program to say it more than yeah, one like could, sentence. Yeah, like it couldn't like exist. Like why did it malfunction so bad? Because it was only programmed for that, like, one, like, stream of phrases. And so when they asked the question that it didn't understand, it had to turn into a bomb. Get ready for a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's tardigrades on the moon. Is that what we've decided? Well, no, they, they died when they hit the, when the lander well, they don't, crashed. They don't know that. I, that just seems... If you were landing on the moon and your ship crashed... I could probably I could probably figure out a way to calculate. Well, you know this ship Brian can sustain you know X amount of giga, gigapascals in right. force pressure. One point twenty one gigapascals. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and this lander landed much at a much greater force than that. But maybe they they were in a vial and they hit a cushion. Yeah, on the way in. Well, they, well they, what they, if you what if you would have wrapped them up in bubble bubble wrap? 
Because it's not about that. It's about it's about like the force if you, itself. If you jump it, off a building, you will die every single time, unless there's a <laughs> net or there's a a stunt man inflatable there aren't any bag nets on the moon. Well, there might you be could a put cushion one there, like a seat cushion or a bunch of mattresses. There aren't any Let's pillows. Shoot up a bunch that, of mattresses. I know up it's there. made out of cheese, but still, it's nah. not made out of cheese. That's a myth. I, you know what, I, I, I believe that the tardigrades found a way, and I think that they're up there plotting. Mm-hmm. It's very, very positive-minded of you. Thinking you know? if if they made a, a human-sized tardigrade, we'd be fucked, right? Yeah, or it might be friendly. We don't know. It's not friendly. Would eat us with so. its weird what projectile if, mouth. Yeah. What if it was just like a puppy with a projectile mouth? No. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm worried about it. I'm. On, I'm more worried about an indestructible puppy. You know, I, honestly, this story freaks me the fuck out. They can't be killed. <laughs> they look horrible. They're 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 just they're on the moon. They'll probably get bigger <laughs> because of the sun's radiation. <laughs> Between this and Y two K, I'm kind of freaking the fuck out because I don't I don't know that it's it, it's only twenty years. It's gonna take a while for those numbers to malfunction everything, and I still right. everyone <laughs>, laughs and thinks it's it's over. But I, we're still, we're not out of the woods yet with the whole Y2K problem. You know that, right? Yeah, I'm, I haven't thought of it, but it makes sense. It explains it why everything in your house has a, a Y2K compliant sticker on it. <laughs> I won't buy anything that's not Y2K compliant. What could you buy today that isn't Y2K compliant? You guys know that I'm married, but there was a big skerfuffle when uh, the 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 priest that came in was not Y2K compliant. <laughs> he was he was refusing to acknowledge it, and I just need that. I need people to acknowledge that it's Y2K could still be a problem. And if you won't acknowledge it, GTFO. I don't listen to any musicians that aren't Y2K compliant. I don't watch movie, TV, anything that's not Y2K compliant. You can't take it in. It's not safe. Yeah. I mean, that's how you get infected with that stuff. I was so fucking frustrated on all those presidential debates that no one asked where I, any of the candidates were. Well, that's how you know it's a real issue, Mike, when they don't bring it up. <laughs> that, right? it, it, oh, They're hiding from it. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yep. So you're saying those debates were a joke? They were a fucking joke. A they didn't ask any of joke. that. No questions about UFOs. No questions about tardigrades no questions <laughs> about y2k not to mention big feet or oh yeah i mean well that's the part of the stuff. course we know that's gonna that's happen par but... for the course the next story comes from nbc philadelphia 10 t-e-n 10 oh like the number yeah like the number 10, yeah, the number 10. yes uh it's, uh, it's the station number. that it's on <laughs> it's a it's a real number too mm-hmm Checks. Is it, does it check out, Mike? Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, no, it's good. Okay, that's good. It's good. I was worried. Hey, Kevin, do you ever call it Filthy Delphia? <laughs> <laughs> you ever? Not, not this time. But you know, okay. when, I'm, when I'm not in my professional capacity. In late May, Renee Cobetri, owner of Philadelphia's Rim Cafe, celebrated his birthday. Wait, what's the cafe called? It is called Rim Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds like filthy Delphia to me. <laughs> uh, hey, 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 hey. Uh, I was thinking uh, uh, maybe I go get a job there. <laughs> maybe I go get a, maybe I go down there and get a job. Uh, maybe I go. Hey, maybe I go go. <laughs> maybe I go down and get a go go to get a job down there and uh, and I get myself a a rim job. You know what I'm saying? How many hey, knuckles? Mom, that's what it's called, Mom. That's what it's called. I didn't name it. I didn't name it. Uh, come on. I didn't name it. So he celebrated his birthday by having Some chefs. Some of the food that tastes a little. Uh... <laughs> Some of the food there around the rim, you know, it gets a little, it's a, I tell you what, the one food I get, it's, I like the dirty rice. It's extra <laughs> dirty. The rim, the, the dirty, the rice, the dirty rice at the rim. <laughs> Why do you think it's so dirty, mom? Oh, come on. I didn't name it that. I just, 
I'm just a bus boy there. I'm just a job <laughs> cleaning up the dirty rim. <laughs> it's filthy. It gets filthy. They need someone to what? Come on, mom. Come on. I got a job. You should be happy for me. I got a job. I didn't name it that. I didn't, I didn't name it that, mom. Okay, I won't. I won't I, it's weird that I can't say the place of the place of the name that I work, but. All right, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh, that's fine. It's weird that some people like the way the rim tastes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mom. All right, all right. I'm going. I'm going. I got to get to work anyway. <laughs> so he celebrated his birthday by having chefs assemble a cheesecake, cheesecake, cheese steak that measures 510 feet long. 510 feet feet long yeah kobetri told local news quote i want to make it big make a big party for everyone so why not bring everyone together and have a couple thousand people unquote several chefs came together to make the magic happen by creating a long line of tables more than two blocks long which blocked ninth street in south philly the chefs used hundreds of rolls, hundreds of pounds of meat and cheese, and created a variety of flavors, including ravioli cheesesteak, marinara cheesesteak, and Spanish cheesesteak. Um, to the, to, I know no one can see this, but I think I scrunched up my face in a more grotesque fashion with each flavor you mentioned. <laughs> Just imagine a, a 500-foot table with melted cheese meat just sitting out on it for probably hours at a time with yeah just and you know that i mean it's a it's a disgusting city it's filthy there's garbage yeah. everywhere there's meat flies everywhere yeah on top of that the each each square inch of that meat steak is just crawling with thousands of tardigrades oh just yeah fucking <laughs> rolling around in the cheese no matter how hot it is because they, uh, it's the hot. It's not going to melt them to death. No. They're just going to swim through it with their little fucking sphincter mouth popping in and out. Right, just reproducing and eating. Yeah, and the chefs are all scratching their asses. You know, <laughs> that's uh, you know, yeah. You know exactly. You no, know. yeah. Did the health department, if they even have one, have anything to say about this? Uh, it doesn't say anything about that. Well, that well, that, surprise. that character from before was the head of the health department. <laughs> oh. hey, hey, mom, I gotta go make sure the place is clean. I made it. Right. Uh, hey, I checked it out extra good. The rim is clean. And it, you know what? You really shouldn't call it a 500 long cheesesteak when it's just a bunch of foot long cheesesteaks next to each other. Yeah. But so the goal was to make a cheesesteak that was 480 feet long, but that was not good enough for these chefs, who ultimately made a 510-foot cheesesteak. That's steak. not a 500-foot... Those are individual cheesesteaks just in a line. <laughs> yeah, this is so this is, half-assed. This is not at all. <laughs> so, Kobietri said the cheesesteak will be submitted for the Guinness World Record, but whether or not it is accepted, because, yeah, it is clearly... A bunch of looks like two foot cheesesteaks all lined right. up together. You guys should see the longest blade of grass ever. <laughs> I just lined up a, a bunch of pieces of grass <laughs> yeah. next to each other, but it's the longest blade of grass ever. It's a, a mile long. He, whether or not it's accepted into the Guinness World Record, I he, have the longest penis in the world. <laughs> <in a minute. laughs> and I, I, I'm technically counting some other men that are standing next to me, though. <laughs> are you docking with them? I've never done that, even though, even though Laser kind of hinted Laser. around it. He was fuck, He was wasted, though. He, he was, was wasted, absolutely. Yeah. He was absolutely out of his mind, and I don't hold. Right. And there's nothing weird. Or, whatever. You, no it big was, deal. It was right off. Right after Gandalf the White shows up, and he decided. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was inspired. It was a moment. Yeah. So he said, whether or not it is accept it is accepted uh, for the Guinness World Record, he already plans to outdo his accomplishment, declaring, "Quote." Next one is going to be more crazy. Get ready, baby. And I'm going to make it happen. Unquote. Oh, so it's Telly Savalas is <laughs> yeah. working at, at the, exactly. the Players the Club. Who loves your cheesecake, baby? Cheesesteak. 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 Why don't you, why don't you uh, follow up in uh, 
what was it food eater magazine take the out take out yeah, see, what, yeah i'm surprised takeout isn't covering this yeah or is this too hard hitting for them <laughs> is it too <laughs> is it too real <laughs> they want stories that don't end in uh fucking vomit and violence <laughs> right. they prefer their food story to not end in a homicide right. <laughs> and domestic abuse it's grotesque <laughs> Like the the food is not good. Right. At some point you're you're reveling in a thing. Yeah, it's not. It's not this is not these aren't good sandwiches. There's no yeah. way. They're sitting out. Somebody brought a tub of pre cooked meat and you know, a bag of, of rolls and just started to dump it all on there just to claim a five hundred foot cheesesteak, which clearly is not a five hundred foot cheesesteak. It's a cheat. Yeah, there's everything is wrong with this. Yeah. This is uh this is a farce. I it wish I farce. could be there to declare <laughs> this <laughs> is a farce. <laughs> what a joke. And I guarantee it's probably the top thing on the sign when you drive into town now. Home yeah, of five hundred yeah. foot cheese steak. Philadelphia. Home of that bell that got cracked. <laughs> Rocky <laughs> and the world's largest hoagie. Mm-hmm. I say wall it off and throw a wall, put a giant wall up around the city and throw all the criminals in there. Right. <laughs> Hopefully was... a plane will never crash and I will not have to go in and rescue the president. <laughs> you and laser laser will probably, I got a team. I got, I got my guys. I got, I got some, you know, we, we bonded pretty hard. Well, that's a lot of hard hitting news. Yeah, yeah, we sure did. It, it is. I think that wraps up another week of the international news service. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com or check us out on social media. We're at International News Pod across the internet. Look at our Patreon, also International News Pod. And uh, we'll see you next week. 